A reading from the book of Matthew. Please sit. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. <clears throat> what did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. <clears throat> Jesus is not the Messiah John the Baptizer was looking for. We get that sense in the message he sends his disciples to Jesus with in the gospel this morning. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? The last time we saw John in Matthew's gospel was back in chapter 3, just right before Jesus comes to him to be baptized in the River Jordan. And there, John the baptizer appears, Matthew says, appearing in the wilderness there to prepare the way of the one who is to come, the Lord. And there he creates quite a spectacle. Maybe you remember this story. He urges the people to repent, and he calls the Pharisees and the Sadducees out on their sin when they dare to show their faces and come to be baptized by him. John demands that the people bear fruit that is worthy of repentance. And it comes with a warning, this message he brings, that those who don't bear good fruit will be chopped down, that the one who is coming has an axe, and he will chop down those that do not bear good fruit and into the fire. One who is more power than, powerful than I is coming after me, John says. And he describes this one who comes with a winnowing fork ready to separate the wheat from the chaff and claiming that he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the kind of preacher that John the baptizer is. Lutherans don't always get into that whole fire and brimstone stuff, but this, this is John. And this is the kind of Messiah that John the baptizer is looking for. One who comes in power and might, who will usher in God's kingdom. But if we were to read between chapter 3 and chapter 11, where we find ourselves this morning, we see that's not what Jesus does. Not the way that John expected, anyway. No, Jesus comes and he is baptized and he is led out into the wilderness to be tempted, and then he comes back. And what Jesus does is he starts to call people to follow him. He begins to cure all sickness and disease. He teaches and proclaims the good news everywhere he goes. Jesus touches lepers, the untouchable, and he makes them clean. He heals a Roman centurion servant. He reaches out even to the Romans, the people occupying their country. Jesus casts out demons and stills storms and heals the paralyzed. He raises a young girl from the dead. Probably much to John's chagrin and disappointment, Jesus sits down and eats with tax collectors and sinners give sight to the blind and speech to the mute, and it is these things that Jesus points to as he responds to John's question. But this is not the in-your-face direct confrontation, overturning of the status quo that John is looking for in a Messiah. And here we come on this third Sunday of Advent, perhaps hoping for the warm, fuzzy Christmas story. And I wonder 
As you hear this story, where do you find yourself in it? This is not a warm and fuzzy Christmas story. What are you looking for here this morning? What kind of Messiah are you expecting to find here? Do we wonder with John the Baptizer if this Jesus is the one? Or should we be spending our time and our energy looking for someone else? This time of year comes with great expectations, right? Of how Christmas will be, of how life ought to be. As I said when we were doing the, the children's message this morning, I had a house blessing, house warming yesterday, and we had lots and lots of cookies. So I'm done with my Christmas baking. Thank you very much. If any of you need some cookies, I have some extra. <laughs> but I know that this time of year, we have all of these traditions and expectations for what Christmas, like Christmas cards and Christmas presents and Christmas cookies and all of this stuff. Perhaps, though, on top of all of that frenzy and that stress, you come to this end of the year reflecting on worries and struggles and pain and problems and grief and hope that somehow in this Christmas season, Jesus will find a way to, to hold all of that together to redeem us, to make something come out of that. That at least if that doesn't happen, the new year is that chance for a fresh start. I know there are many of us who perhaps relate to Clark Griswold. Do you remember him? Of the vacation movies. My husband's favorite Christmas movie is Christmas Vacation, so we watch it every year. I've grown to like it a little bit more. But Clark Griswold kind of epitomizes this stress, this desire for the perfect Christmas. They go out and they find the perfect tree. He struggles and wrestles with that red light display. They want to have the perfect meal where perhaps, finally, maybe you relate to this most of all, where everyone will finally get along for a change. And then there is that adorable baby, the little precious little baby Jesus in his golden fleece diaper, to, to paraphrase Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights. That's his favorite Jesus, the baby Jesus, who somehow, in this baby, we hope, will give us peace, that peace we're looking for, that goodwill to all that the Bible promises. That's the expectation and the hope, but we know that our reality does not always or often live into that hope. Christmas, the Christmas we may dream of, is the one we used to know, but that's not the Christmas we have now. Life can be harder than we'd like, and we are left with John the baptizer wondering why Jesus whoop in and fix everything once and for all. If Christ the Lord has come, then why do we still struggle and grieve? and hurt so much in a way that hits us so much harder, perhaps, at this time of year. And so we wonder, is Jesus the one who is to come, or are we to look for another? Is this the Messiah we've been looking for or not? And we may hope with John the baptizer, who sends this question from prison, that Jesus will respond with a definitive yes! I am the one you are looking for, or no, so that we can know where to wait for another. But Jesus doesn't give that strictly definitive answer. But what he does say points to, the, to who he is and what he's about. And what Jesus reminds John, and therefore us in this passage, is that in Jesus' actions, the kingdom of heaven is coming near. God's kingdom is breaking into the world. We see these points of light breaking into our darkness in the words and actions and being of Jesus. John may have expected and longed for a powerful, mighty Savior who would go up against the political and religious authorities of the world in obvious ways. But what he gets instead is a powerful, mighty Savior who comes hidden in weakness, in vulnerability. He comes, this small baby, to heal the broken, to lift up the downtrodden, to give hope to the hopeless. This Messiah doesn't look like the one John was expecting, but what he does ultimately goes beyond John's expectations. This is not a Messiah who comes to trample the powerful only to assume power for himself. No, this Messiah comes and stands with the poor and the lame, 
He heals the blind and the deaf. He does not stay at a distance, kind of watching and hovering, but he comes near, wrapped in flesh and blood, and touches the untouchable. He even raises people from the dead and offers new life. This Messiah doesn't simply deal with the symptoms of our trouble, but he comes with that axe to the root of it all, our sin, the brokenness of creation, the ways that we have been warped from who God created us to be. And he comes with an axe that breaks down those things, not with judgment and recrimination, but with the power of love. He brings and offers us hope and healing and wholeness, not in one fell swoop as we might wish and desire, but ultimately with the promise that love wins. This Messiah comes to redeem us and all of creation because of the deep, steadfast love he has for each of us. This Messiah, this one we hear about this day, comes to us as he comes to John in the dark prisons of our life and promises to stand beside us, to walk with us until at last we are set free. Because this is the Messiah, the one who reaches out to those who are in need to lift them up. He may not be the Messiah we thought we were looking for, Thanks be to God, he's the one who always comes looking for us. Amen.